Good morning. This morning, I have a word from Jesus to share with you, and it's a good word. You know, one thing we know for certain, and that is Jesus only speaks truth. What he says is real and genuine. And the word that he speaks today in the text from Matthew that we're going to be studying is a word that speaks to each and every one of us who call on his name, who believe in him, who trust in him, who honor him as our Savior and follow him as our Lord. These are good words that he has to say, and the word he speaks to us is a life-changing word. So let's begin by talking to our Heavenly Father. Let's bring our hearts, lay them open before his altar, and receive all that he has to give and to impart to each of us, okay? Would you join me, please? Heavenly Father, how we thank you for your goodness, your incredible love in Jesus, our Savior. We thank you for your word of truth that speaks into our lives, even in the midst of the confusion of our current day and the uncertainty of the world in which we live. We thank you that with you, there is absolute assurance and certainty. And from you flows only unvarnished truth. May that truth penetrate our souls this day. May we be encouraged and built up by the word of our Lord Jesus. And may we live out these words in our daily lives. And we pray it in Jesus' strong name. Amen. Well, over the last few weeks now, we've been taking a look at Jesus' great Sermon on the Mount, and we've done that in a very systematic fashion, taking a look at the Beatitudes, the Blesseds. And uh, as we've looked at those Blesseds, we have seen Jesus describing what it means to be his follower. To be a follower of Jesus is one who has a, a, spirit, a spirit of uh, spiritual poverty, who recognizes, oh, man, I need God. I, I desperately need him. To, to follow Jesus is to realize I am a sinner. To follow Jesus is to hunger and thirst for him and for his truth. To seek to know the living God. To follow Jesus is to show that new life in him, in the way we treat other people. And to follow Jesus, as we saw last week, also means that that often brings persecution, rejection from others anger, bitterness, hatred. But nonetheless, God is good and God is faithful. And so we go on. And now we come to what Jesus says to all of us who follow him. He has described our character. And now he tells us what that means. And so we read in Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, Jesus is speaking here. And he's speaking to you and to me. And he says, you are the salt of the earth. You're the salt of the earth. And then he says, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. Now, we know that sodium chloride, salt, is a pretty stable compound. You know, it really is. It, uh, it holds up well. In Jesus' day, however, salt was not as pure and refined as what you might get at the grocery store from Morton Salt. You know, no salt salts like Martin Salt salts. But, uh, anyway, in Jesus' day, it was often mixed with other, other chemicals, other, uh, just frankly, dirt, junk. And salt could be leached out, and all you'd end up with is something that was really useless. And so Jesus says, make sure you remain salty. Make sure that you really live out what you are. In other words, he's telling you and me, be what he has made us. By faith in him, you and I have become the children of God. By faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are declared to be his precious children. By faith in the Lord Jesus, we're told we will live forever. And so Jesus says, because of that, you are the salt of the earth. So keep salty. Now, what does that mean? What I'd like to do this morning is take a look at what we know about salt. And, you know, when Jesus uses an analogy like this, there is great depth to it. And so let's begin this morning by looking at the properties of salt. Here are some of the things we know about salt. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus in on three separate things, okay? The first thing is salt preserves. Now, that is something that the ancients knew. 
In fact, it is something that our grandparents and great-grandparents knew well. But you and I today live in the age of artificial refrigeration. We've got freezers, we have uh, refrigerators, everything is neatly cared for. In the day and age before refrigeration, the only way you could preserve food very often was by salting it. Meat, for instance, decays very quickly. And as a result, pork would be salted, salt pork. Beef would be salted. It preserves. One of the, the characteristics or properties of salt is that it preserves things. And as Jesus says to you and me, you are the salt of the earth. What he is saying is, you and I have a preservative influence in the world around us. When you and I truly do walk in the footsteps of Jesus and live as he has called us to live, keep in mind, faith is far more than just simply acknowledging that God exists or recognizing that Jesus died on the cross and rose from the grave. Faith is always lived. It is shown in daily life. And when you and I recognize his lordship, his salvation, his power, it changes us. We become different people, and we end up having a huge influence in the world, whether we realize it or not. When followers of Jesus truly do practice what we believe, it preserves the world around us. It keeps it from getting even more corrupt. We can look at us what is going on in our culture today and see massive changes taking place. We see things that former generations would have looked upon and been aghast at. The only thing that prevents the human race from descending further and further into unbelief and iniquity is the presence of God's people among them who really live out their faith and make an impact on the world around them. When you and I live as Christians in a world that is becoming less and less Christian, we have an impact on the people around us. It preserves them. In fact, in the Bible, we see many examples of the preserving influence of believers. God said, for instance, that he would preserve Sodom and Gomorrah if only 50 righteous people were found. And then 45, and Abraham says, well, Lord, what if there are only 40? And God says, for the sake of 40 righteous people, I will save the cities. Abraham finally talked to God and said, what if there are only 10? And the Lord said, for the sake of 10, I will preserve the cities. Believers who walk by faith, who live out their Christian beliefs in the way they deal with others, in the way they re relate to the world, we have a preserving influence. It makes a huge difference. And what Jesus is saying is, realize who you are. You have tremendous influence among people around you, in your family, in your circle of friends. You have tremendous influence at work or wherever you are at school. Understand, you are the salt of the earth. So act that way. Live out your faith and watch what a difference it makes. Salt preserves and true faith has a preserving influence on a corrupted and fallen world. But there's more to salt than just preservative. Salt does something else, and that is it provides flavor. Uh, for some of us who have uh, ever been on a salt-free diet, and I know a number of you have gone through that, uh, salt-free diet, you know, it just doesn't taste as good. Salt is tasty. I mean, it adds real flavor to food. I, I'm a pasta lover. In, in fact, I, I don't think I've ever met a pasta that I didn't enjoy. But one of the things I've learned over the years is pasta tastes a whole lot better when it is boiled in really salty water. In years past, I used to take the salt shaker like this one right here and just kind of sprinkle a little bit of salt in the water and then and raise the temperature to the boiling point. Now I pour the salt in, it tastes so much better. Pasta that has been boiled in salt just has sensational flavor. And what the Lord is saying to you and me is,
We are to be tasty people. <laughs> we are to be the kind of people whose faith shows. And, and by showing our faith, I don't mean that we walk around in a, you know, this sort of fashion. Uh, no, we are joyful people. We, we believe that God loved the world so much he gave us one and only son. We believe that Jesus Christ died for us all. We believe there is hope for this planet and hope for people. We believe that even people in the most desperate of situations can be delivered by the living power of the risen Jesus Christ. And as a result, we bring flavor into the world because we let people know God is good. And God does amazing things. And he is faithful. We are people of joy because we know what our destiny is. We don't have to wonder what's down the road. We know what's coming. And this is it. God wins. And we will be victorious with him. And as a result, we can be joyful in even the most difficult of circumstances because we know that God is faithful and God is good. And as a result, Jesus says, you're the salt of the earth. Don't lose that flavor. Don't lose your saltiness. Let your joy be evident to all. The Apostle Paul talked about that in his letter to the Colossians. Love these words, Colossians 4 verse 6. He says, let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt. Don't you love that? Seasoned with salt so that you may know how to answer everyone. Be the person God has made you in Christ, one who is filled with joy. Always give thanks to God, the scripture says. Rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again. The apostle writes, rejoice. God's people are called to bring flavor to life, the flavor of joy, the flavor of the goodness of God. And Jesus says, you and I, we are the salt of the earth. Let the flavor be tasted by all. There's a third property of salt that's really interesting too, and that is it produces thirst. If, if I may share a story that goes back to college days, I, I played soccer in college, and after the soccer season ended, a lot of us soccer players, uh, we uh, basically, we worked at the, uh, at the uh, basketball games because, you know, it was a way we could support other athletes. And what we would do is we'd make popcorn and sell, uh, we called it pop, some people call it soda. But one of the things that we did with the popcorn is we put lots of salt on the popcorn. Not only does it taste better, but people get thirsty when they eat salty popcorn. Individuals who are seated and standing in the stands watching the, the basketball game and chomping on the popcorn, um, shouting their hearts out, that's salty popcorn. It tastes good. It also makes them come back for more pop. <laughs> Kept us busy. It also produces thirst. And you see, when a person truly does follow the Lord Jesus Christ, people notice that. When, when you provide the flavor of God in daily life, people are thirsty for that. There are many people who long to know what you and I know. Because when you live your life apart from God, things fall apart. And when believers are walking with the Lord, people notice the difference. They can see the difference in someone, even someone who's going through great pain, but has deep faith. I've seen that over the years. I've seen individuals who have suffered greatly, but have great faith in the living God. And as a result, have been an encouragement and, and an inspiration to many others. Their lifestyle, their influence causes others to want the same thing. I see what that person has and I want the same. Jesus is saying to you and me, that's the kind of people we are. He's saying that's what he has made us. You are the salt of the earth. Don't lose that saltiness. He's saying, realize, realize what we have in him and allow that to show in the lives of others.
Now, Jesus uses that analogy of salt. And, and one of the things that, that strikes me as I look at these words is just what he said. You know, he said, you are the salt of the earth. He, he didn't say, you're the gold of the globe. He didn't say, you're the platinum of the planet. He said, you're the salt of the earth. And I believe there's great significance in that because Salt is both common and precious. You see, if Jesus said, you're the gold of the globe, we could easily have said, well, there's not a whole lot of gold around, so how do I know that I'm you know, one of the golden ones? Salt's everywhere. Salt is common. If Jesus had said, you're the platinum of the planet, platinum is pretty rare, but his followers are everywhere. In fact, when, when I think about these words of Jesus, do you realize how radical they were when he spoke them? At that particular time, only a small number of people were following him, numbered in the hundreds, maybe the thousands, when he delivered his Sermon on the Mount. And yet he would say, you're the salt of the earth. In other words, you're going to have an impact on the entire planet. And he's speaking to everyone, not a select few, not just to the upper crust, He's speaking to us all. And he says, you're the salt of the earth. Salt is common. It's everywhere. And you and I, no matter how small we may be, no matter how remote we may be located, no matter who we are, if we're a follower of Jesus, we, we have an impact. All of us do. And we are precious. Salt has always been precious. You know, Roman soldiers were actually given a salt allowance, a salt ration. By the way, that is where we get the word salary. It goes all the way back to that salt ration. You and I are precious to God. And our faith is something that impacts other people. And so Jesus is telling us, be what I have made you. You are the salt of the earth. Let that salt out. Don't hold it in. <laughs> Get it out of the shaker. Allow your life to show the goodness of God in Christ. Allow your example to impact other people. Allow the Holy Spirit to mold and shape you more and more in the image of the Lord Jesus so that you and I may have an ever-expanding impact on the lives of people around us. The way we live, the way we share and show our faith, the way we trust God, even in the face of difficulty, that has a huge impact on others. It preserves a society. It seasons and makes savory the culture. And it also causes people to thirst for what we have. God's plan is to draw all people to himself. The day will come when every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. And that day comes as God's people live out their faith, just as Jesus has called us to, preparing the way for the day of his final appearing. That's our mission. And this, you are the salt of the earth. That's his declaration to you and me. And he's saying to us, let, let your faith impact those around you. Watch what God can do when God's people follow him. It's a good word. It's God's word. It's his word for us. You're the salt of the earth. Amen. Let's pray, shall we? Father, how we bless and praise you that you have taken us, individuals who are fallen and broken, and you have lifted us up into the heavenly realms through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you that you have declared us to be your precious children. We thank you that you have announced that we are the salt of the earth. May we be more and more salty, Lord, with each passing day.
Let our faith be seen in the way we treat others, in the way we act to events around us, in the way we live, in the way we trust you in everything. Amen. Before we wrap things up today, I'd also lay out for you some discussion thoughts, just to kind of get discussion going. Our, our faith is to be something that impacts every aspect of our lives. And one of the things that that means is we talk about it. We don't just simply worship God and then go away until the next week. We talk about our faith. We live it daily. And one of the ways that we grow in that faith is simply by discussing it with one another so that we can tell others the good things that God has done. And, and so for discussion this morning, have you been influenced by the saltiness of other believers? Who are some people who have impacted your life? Individuals who may be around today or maybe with the Lord, but individuals whose saltiness has really had an impact on you. And then share some specific positive examples from your life experiences. You know, it's very easy for us to head off on a negative track and say, well, so-and-so did this to me and so-and-so said that. Now, let's talk about the positive examples. People whose example really has had a huge impact in your walk of faith. And then finally, what are some ways God's people can lose their saltiness? You know, what are the dangers? One of them, quite honestly, is not taking God seriously. Uh, basically just getting into a religious mode rather than a life of faith. But what are some things that can cause God's people to lose that saltiness? And, and how do we avoid that? Well, God bless you. Have a wonderful day and the Lord continue to keep you in his, his protective care. God bless you.